I saw this illumination that was moving with respect to the stars. We were smart enough to not say, uh, Houston, there's a light out there that's following us. So technically, it becomes an unidentified flying object. While Neil and Buzz were on the lunar surface, Neil switched to the, the medical channel and spoke directly with the chief medical officer, saying, they're here, they're parked on the side of the crater, they're watching us. I spotted a lot of stuff that seemed to not belong on the moon. And it has very distinct features of a satellite dish. It's got the dish itself, the crater shape. It's got a long spike that appears to come out of the middle. All sorts of stuff that looks exactly like a satellite dish on Earth looks. There's an interesting picture on the moon that does appear to show something that could be a bridge, maybe a pipe, could be an inching worm. I have no doubt that extraterrestrials could very well have populated or made structures on the far side of the moon. The reaction of numerous space defense officials was a fear and astonishment. And it would make sense that governments and military agencies might well be quaking in their boots, wondering who's built these structures? Where are they from? What do they want? There is one object that reminds people of a cooling tower from a nuclear power plant. Any species that could travel through the stars enough to put a base on the moon wouldn't have to blink before they could take care of us. The other thing that is inside this lunar module looks like a woman, and this is the alien that they recovered from the ship. There was a study done by the Brookings Institute in the early 1960s, so before NASA went to the moon, there was sort of this idea that if we were to have any kind of interaction with alien life form or intelligence, that maybe we shouldn't tell the public because the public might not be able to handle it. As the 45th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon dawns, there are many mysteries about man's first lunar landing that remain unsolved. What did the astronauts actually encounter there? And what made NASA stop going back to the moon after Apollo 17? Is there evidence of an alien presence on the moon? And perhaps all around us? These startling photographs recently discovered in NASA's official archive were taken by the Apollo astronauts themselves. The gigantic, artificial-looking structures they document, which have never been shown on television before, seem to defy simple scientific explanation. Could this be a nuclear power plant of some kind? A massive satellite dish trained on Earth? Even an alien fortress? We took the pictures to some of the brightest people of our world. And nobody can say for sure what these structures represent. Military experts tell us that if there is an alien base on the moon, it poses a serious threat to humanity. Tonight, we'll examine all the evidence. We'll attempt to determine if such an alien menace exists and we'll investigate the baffling case of Apollo 20. Could this really be a female alien recovered during a secret mission to the moon just a few years after the Apollo program supposedly ended? You decide for yourself as we investigate Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed. skies around the world <gasps> it's descending at an extremely alarming rate of speed over the United States Russia and China UFOs are being reported in record numbers you are looking at what might be actual alien beings caught on camera 
This extraordinary video shot by an American researcher in Turkey purportedly shows a hovering extraterrestrial spaceship piloted by ETs known as the Greys. Look closely at the footage. The two aliens appear to be moving around in what might be the craft's cockpit. When the craft came back to the same area two days later, its appearance changed. Then, two nights later, it hovered again, apparently under one alien pilot's control, lit by the moonlight. And what can explain this enormous disc-shaped craft navigating over our moon? And this gigantic cube positioned on the lunar surface. Both were caught on video by a British videographer named John Leonard Walson using a specially designed telescope he assembled. No matter what the answers are, current mass interest in extraterrestrials clearly is at an all-time high. The sheer number of websites, blogs, YouTube channels, social media accounts, pages, everything dedicated to UFOs and aliens, I think really speaks to how much we are fascinated with and want to believe in alien lives and UFOs. And there are also signs an alien presence could be solar system-wide. Take a look at this incredible event, captured by the Solar Dynamics Observatory satellite on March 11, 2012. What is happening to our sun? There appears to be an Earth-sized disk in the corona extracting plasma from the sun's surface. Then, hours later, the dark orb seems to pull away, releasing the plasma filament bands. Many experts are puzzled. I can't explain what that is, but I can definitely see why aliens may be interested in taking plasma. A lot of these UFOs seem to be encircled by plasma-type energy. So plasma could be a fuel for these aliens. It would make perfect sense if some of these craft are fueled by plasma, that they would go to the sun and actually draw plasma from it to charge their craft. And what is happening on the moon? Earlier this year, millions of people began poring over this image captured by Google Moon that many major news outlets suggested could be an alien base. Writer Lee Spiegel covered the story for the popular Huffington Post. Recently, uh, something came to my attention that someone had used the Google Moon application. And this person zoomed in closer and closer and came up with an image. It's triangular, two lines of seven lights, perfectly spaced between each other, and that those lights are sitting what looks like a, a, a black surface, and then immediately below the black surface is a very bright white light. And so the question started coming up, is this an extraterrestrial colony? What is this on the moon? Though some researchers have called this a digital artifact, others still feel it could be an actual lunar construction. Is it an installation? We really don't know, other than the fact that it uh, has these angles, it has these bright lights, and it really does appear to be man-made in some format, at least. Perhaps concern over unexplained images like these is prompting governments to investigate. October 1st, 2010. China launches its Chang'e 2 lunar orbiter. Soon, web surfers everywhere are mesmerized by this stunning image. This particular piece of footage seems to show what looks like an installation, a facility, a factory maybe, on the surface of the moon. It kind of looks like an aerial photograph of something along the lines of a North Pole installation or, or outpost. Clear angles, right angles, seeming to show something like an intelligently built structure. The big question is, what is it? What's it being used for? The vivid picture sparked heated debate among believers and skeptics alike. It was all over the place, all around the world. Not just UFO researchers were reading it and watching it, but actually members of the general public as well, in their millions. But top lunar researchers soon discovered that the image comes not from the Chinese orbiter, but from the archives of NASA. 
turns out that it's actually a lunar orbiter photograph, so it's actually something NASA took a picture of. The problem is, while it looks really authentic and it's certainly impressive, and there's no question that if it's a legitimate photo that it's artificial, the reality is that there's no frame number associated with it, so nobody really knows what to go back and check. Despite the image's original misidentification as coming from the Chinese space program, China's recent landing of a rover on the moon might have sparked renewed interest in the rovers NASA is currently operating on Mars. April 8, 2014. TV news outlets throughout America began reporting how this puzzling bright light was captured on or beneath the planet Mars by NASA's Curiosity rover. Though some scientists suspect it could be caused by the sun's reflection or cosmic rays, no one knows for sure what the origin is. Then, earlier this year, people pored over this perplexing image that UFO sites suggested was an alien face. It wasn't the first time a face on Mars captured the public's imagination. In 1976, these pictures, taken by NASA's Viking orbiter of a sphinx-like mesa located near huge pyramids in an area called Cydonia, inspired millions to think aliens might have built these things. And perhaps the Egyptian monuments too, due to the obvious geometric similarities. But some scientists who were initially excited about the cosmic implications say more recent NASA pictures might help explain the face's human appearance. When I grew up in the 70s, of course, the Viking images showed that, that unusual face in the Sidonia region. But when we got the Mars Global Surveyor out and started to take different camera angles, different lighting angles, it became quite obvious that it was just a, a large mesa with very interesting lighting angles that made it look like a face. Nevertheless, signs an ET race might have built an outpost closer to Earth. Came the same year the Viking orbiter image made headlines with the publication of the book, Somebody Else is on the Moon. Its author pointed to very unusual NASA photos, including one of a lunar region called Mare Crisium, where years earlier, newspapers reported a bridge had mysteriously appeared but the Mare Crisium image taken by the Apollo 16 astronauts seems to contain structures much more startling and potentially ominous. So you have an object like the castle wall. It looks like a castle wall. It looks like it's got three little arrow slits, maybe some battlements at the top. Off to the side, you see something that looks more like a platform and extruding from the center of it is this tower type object. It definitely extrudes up. It's got a shadow out to the side. The thing it's sitting on is very interesting because it's very circular, very round. Um, and also it, it, it seems to have some shadow underneath it. Some people see what you might term as a cooling tower from a nuclear power plant. Other researchers contend the so-called castle wall at Mare Crisium actually resembles a fortress with a turret or pipe of some kind extending out of it casting a dark shadow underneath. Could this be an enormous weapon defending an entire nuclear complex? Not only was this spar jutting out at apparently a 45 degree angle with a ball appearing object on the very end of it, there have been estimates that this structure may be as much as a mile in diameter and width. Well, there certainly is something artificial. An equally perplexing NASA photo included in the book Somebody Else is on the Moon seemed to show unknown objects carving long, deep tracks into the lunar terrain. And at least one of these objects apparently had the ability to move in mystifying ways. If you follow these back to their point of origin, the one in the foreground rolled up and out of a crater. To me, this photograph was, in my mind, beyond any doubt, the smoking gun of activity on the moon, inexplicable activity on the moon. Indications that NASA 
and possibly the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency were determined to keep such baffling lunar activity a secret can be seen in the harrowing story of petroleum engineer Vito Sicari. With a copy of Somebody Else's On the Moon in hand, he and a friend stormed the gates of NASA's Houston Space Flight Center shortly after the Apollo missions ended, demanding to see sharp versions of the pictures the book contained. But he was stonewalled from the start. There were endless meetings, endless numbers of forms we had to fill out, but it was clear they were trying to discourage us. They didn't want us to go any further. So we got back on the phone and we go call them back and said, you know what? We got this book, we're gonna duplicate a thousand copies. I don't care if we gotta drop them in there by helicopter. And we're spreading this information around. We got a call back and said, all right, we'll make arrangements for you to have access to these photographs. The images he was permitted to view in a high security archive revealed things literally out of this world. Sakari was overwhelmed. We were escorted into the into this room and it's like five or six of these full-length tables. It turned out to be more than a thousand pictures. But the resolution was very high. And at that moment, the whole occasion turned. It became almost solemn. Because we knew what we were looking at. And we knew what it meant. There are structures there. There were pipelines. The bridges were clear as a bell. There was machinery. There were tank tracks, what appeared to be tank tracks. When I looked at those clear images, we knew that we were looking at uh, an existing, or at least an ancient, technology. These things didn't grow. These things were manufactured. These things were built. And they were built on a huge scale. A massive scale that suggests a race of beings we might not be able to successfully confront, should we have to. If hostile extraterrestrials are on the surface of the moon and are planning some sort of assault on the Earth, if we're dealing with creatures, with entities that are far in advance of us, I often wonder, would we even stand a chance? Coming up next is a gigantic alien satellite dish spying on Earth. We just can't build them that big ourselves. Are NASA astronauts convinced that aliens have visited our moon? I have no doubt. And later, did the Apollo 11 astronauts encounter a spaceship on the moon? I don't want to even get involved in it. Find out when Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed continues. As we've just seen, there is growing evidence of an alien presence in our skies, in the solar system, and most shockingly, on the surface of the moon. Investigators point to this NASA photo taken by the Apollo 16 astronauts and can identify what appears to be a huge fortress consisting of a towering cylindrical structure positioned next to what might be a gun turret extending out for more than a mile in the Mare Crisium region. Is this proof from NASA's own archive of an alien base existing on the side of the moon that always faces Earth? And might this base even include a massive satellite dish? Experts see the dish and its location as a cause for alarm. If we, the general public, can see this imagery on the surface of the moon, then it's clear that military and government agencies can as well. They might well be sort of quaking in their boots, wondering who's built these structures, where are they from, what do they want? If what researchers say is right, that this is potentially an armed atomic facility of some kind, then the advanced extraterrestrial race of beings who built it managed to include something nearby that Earth-based telecommunications companies can only be in awe of. 
of people who look at a Sada crater and see something that looks like a satellite dish, and maybe even with a base underneath. And it has very, very clear, very distinct features of a satellite dish. It's got the dish itself, the crater shape. It's got a long spike that appears to come out of the middle. And then down below, you can see structural members, cross beams, all sorts of stuff that looks exactly like a satellite dish on Earth looks. Top researchers are convinced what we are looking at is nothing less than an engineered technological wonder miles in diameter. Its intricacies are hard to ignore. Look at what might be a parabolic reflector dish, a subreflector mounted on a mast over the dish, and an underlying substructure of girders and supports that not only hold up the dish, they also house the mechanism that rotates and aims the dish in a specific direction. When, you know, you make a visual comparison where it matches up exactly with something terrestrial that's artificial, my conclusion is, well, that's what it is. It's not a funny looking crater. It really is a satellite dish. Remember, this is very close to the possible nuclear installation and its protective armament. Might it be a listening device to the stars, our Earth, or an alien home planet? There appear to be radar installations, the kind of radio telescope dishes that are used by the SETI organization in their search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And when they're sending signals from Earth into outer space, they use these dishes. We've all seen them. We all know what they look like. And, and there are several of these dishes on the moon. Are they monitoring us? Are they watching us? Are they preparing for an attack? We just really don't know. This gargantuan one, measuring miles in diameter, looks big enough to hear an interplanetary whisper. If we could build stuff that big and make it useful and find ways to put it to good use, we would do so. We just can't build them that big ourselves, but a very advanced ancient civilization with higher technology almost certainly could. But there are scientists who have suggested this is the remnants of a naturally occurring crater called Asada, formed from being decimated by meteors striking the lunar surface nearby over eons of time. So, a hundred, a million years later, 10 million years later, another impact blast happens somewhere close, and it blows all of the loose regolith material away. So what we're left with is effectively the shell of that original impact crater, left almost looking freestanding now by itself on the lunar surface. Despite such prosaic attempts to explain away something so visually compelling, Edgar Mitchell, the sixth Apollo astronaut to walk on the moon, is not so dismissive. I suspect they're looking at us. They're busy, uh, have been busy studying us. That's true. I have no doubt that extraterrestrials could very well have populated or made structures on the far side of the moon. Though he hasn't seen the structures himself, Mitchell has a good idea of what he'd find. First of all, they got to have habitat. Well, I suspect the ETs have to sleep and eat and uh, like we do. They maybe have different bodies and so forth, but they still have nourishment problems and uh, they have to have structures that support those necessities. I think it's interesting that Apollo 14 astronaut Ed Mitchell walked on the moon is also such a firm believer in aliens. It strikes me as very interesting that somebody who devoted their life to science and who actually went to the moon and was there for science and with technological backing has this, this interesting connection with alien belief. Mitchell's belief in aliens existing on the moon has been recently validated by the book ULOs, Unidentified Lunar Objects Revealed in NASA Photography. But its author did not initially set out to find what some experts now regard as definitive evidence of alien constructions on the moon. Originally, I was just going to make a coffee table book of the best picture I could take with my eight-inch telescope. And then on the other page, a photo from the Apollo missions of the same area. I started to see a lot of strange things on the surface of the moon. Beginning with official NASA images taken by the Apollo 8 astronauts, Stern soon pinpointed complex geometric structures that clearly looked unnatural. Startled and confused about his discovery, he sought answers. I did further research on the topic and started to see that other people had been talking about 
that there may be structures on the surface of the moon from some kind of alien presence. A presence even skeptically minded experts are hard pressed to explain. I visited with an archaeologist at one of the colleges in Tucson, and she happened to be a doctorate in archaeology. And I started showing her some of these images. She was kind of stunned by them. And then I exposed to her that these were actually on the moon. And she said to me, had you not told me those were on the moon, I would have told you those were man-made. Could this be yet another gigantic ET satellite station, large enough to be seen from orbit? Filmed by the Apollo 8 astronauts, it's located close to the far side of the moon. It suggests an alien presence extends to the lunar side perpetually hidden from human eyes. There's so many examples of these things that it's, it, it's undeniable. Someone needs to sit down and look at this stuff and really, really check it out. That's what has to happen. Perhaps that was a primary directive of the Apollo 8 mission itself, to not only focus its cameras on the far side of the moon, but to actually spy on aliens occupying a place the United States government wanted to control as a military staging area of last resort in case of a nuclear war with the former Soviet Union. It's kind of ironic that at the dawning of the 1960s, the US Army had a significant project in place called Project Horizon. And this was essentially a program to build a manned base on the surface of the moon. And the idea was that in the event that the Soviets launched a sneak attack on the United States, if in a worst case scenario, a lot of the US military bases got taken out, at least we could launch a counterattack with missiles situated on the surface of the moon. But the big irony is we chose not to build a base, but very possibly somebody else from somewhere else has done exactly that. Up next, were aliens observing man's first moonwalk? Neil switched to the, the medical channel, saying they're here, they're parked on the side of the crater. Also, did Apollo 14 see signs of aliens? And there's like a cluster of five little domes with light shining inside. And later, did an alien ship destroy a Russian probe? Find out when Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed, continues. According to experts now studying provocative NASA pictures that show mysterious artificial structures existing on the moon, there's clear evidence an alien race might have built fortifications and possible weapon systems for either offensive or defensive purposes. When we see things like facilities, installations, factories, in some cases what even look like radar dishes and possibly even nuclear installations on the surface of the moon, I think it would pay us to be wary as well. Many of these official NASA photographs were taken by Apollo 8, the US mission that beat the Russians in putting men into lunar orbit. Its cameras focused on the far side, capturing inexplicable structures, highly indicative of intelligent design. But NASA and the United States government were possibly already aware of alien structures on the far side of the moon, thanks to their Russian space rivals. Two years before and four years to the day of the historic Apollo 11 moon landing, an unmanned Soviet spacecraft, Zond 3, took two pictures of mysterious objects that have baffled experts for decades. One of them showed an absolutely crystal clear tower sticking up out of the surface of the moon. You could not see through it. It appeared to be a solid object, and there's no way that anything sticking straight up out of the lunar surface like that, 22 miles high it would have been, could possibly be natural. It has to be artificial. Another image a little bit later in the orbit, they took a picture of what appeared to be a sort of shattered dome type structure. Again, sticking five, 10 miles above the lunar surface that had holes punched in the, the roof of it and absolutely clearly cannot, should not be there. There's no natural model under which either one of these objects can be on these photographs, yet there they are and they've been on these official Russian photographs now for, for over 40 years. Enhancements of the damaged dome suggest that there has been significant amount of deterioration, most likely from long-term bombardment of meteors. 
Yet the dome still looks very geometric. Could this be remnants of an alien habitat? Whether the Apollo 8 astronauts were aware of the Soviet Zon 3 photos remains unclear. But they did manage to film their own inexplicable tower that has mystified experts. Could this be a lunar skyscraper with a broadcasting antenna? And how could this perplexing Apollo 8 image of enormous structures so clearly artificial looking be anything but the work of intelligent beings? There's an interesting picture on the moon that does appear to show something that could be a bridge, maybe a pipe, could be an inching worm. But the reality is, is that image is taken off of the edge of an impact crater right in the ejecta blanket. So right in the middle of the blast zone. Scientists are hard pressed to explain it naturally. So it's, it's theoretically possible that some of this material may have formed bridges of some sort, but it's probably most likely that this was just a jumbled of material and that's how it ended up landing. Take a good look at the arching bridge and the obvious shadow it casts. On Earth, it would dwarf any raised roadway mankind has ever erected. And what does the worm-like piping positioned on top of the adjacent structure represent? Using technology similar to what NASA uses for creating 3D virtual views of two-dimensional features on planets, we can see what it would be like to fly under, around, and over the structures. It's easy to appreciate the alarming scale involved here. Whatever the structures are, they appear to be architectural marvels constructed long before humans touched down on the lunar surface. Might the builders have been monitoring NASA missions, anticipating our arrival? I saw this uh, illumination that was moving with respect to the stars. We were smart enough to not say, uh, Houston, there's a light out there that's following us. So technically, it becomes an unidentified flying object. Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, admits a UFO seemingly tracked the spacecraft from a relatively close distance. Although he persistently denies allegations that he and fellow astronaut Neil Armstrong encountered aliens on the moon, other former members of NASA say otherwise. There have been a lot of rumors about uh, what actually took place during the, uh, the lunar mission while uh, Neil and Buzz were on the lunar surface uh, back at the Johnson Space Center during a, a couple of minutes of broken communication. Neil switched over to the medical channel to speak directly with the chief medical officer of the mission. And at that, the comment was, he says, they're here, they're, all, they're parked around the rim of the crater and they're watching us. Interestingly, the late Neil Armstrong made cryptic comments at the White House in 1994 for the 25th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission that have made many people wonder if a cover-up might be involved. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. I've always wondered why Neil Armstrong mentioned something about pulling back a veil of secrecy and science and truth in that press conference on the 25th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing. I mean, I have no idea what he was referencing and I don't think we'll ever know. Yet another NASA mission, the one ET believer Edgar Mitchell was on, might have filmed the definitive evidence of aliens on the moon. The Apollo 14 mission was a really pivotal mission. Most people don't realize that only two of the astronauts were actually walked on the surface of the moon, and the other one stayed on board in the command module and continued to circle around and around the moon and taking film strips and photographs so we were completely covering all of the, the backside of the moon. Back on Earth, the footage was shown to one of NASA's top astronomers. During the viewing, an extraordinary sequence came on screen. The command module is coming around the backside of the moon with the cameras rolling, and there's like a cluster of five little domes with light shining inside. And there was one of them that there was looked like a, a column of, of steam or something projected up from the top. So there was something really there. I can guarantee you it was certainly something that was not a natural occurrence on the moon. But when the footage was played again the next day for NASA engineers, the key section with the mysterious domes had somehow disappeared. I took the film out and there was no splices. There were no cuts and all the holes lined up. That means within 24 hours, they had to have taken the film out, cut the portion out, 
uh, made a copy, airbrushed it out, spliced it back in, and then made a duplicate of it and had it available for him. Such accusations that NASA has routinely airbrushed out evidence of alien activity acquired during its space missions has swirled for decades. But skeptics are not so easily convinced. If a NASA photo manager told me that he had screened Apollo 14 footage for astronomers that had shown some sort of glowing lights on the moon that then that section of the film was spliced out, I would wonder whether the film was damaged. I would wonder if there was a reason that the film had to be tampered with. I wouldn't necessarily say it's covering up aliens. But NASA might have had motivation to cover up ET artifacts on the moon. Prior to the Apollo missions, a Brookings Institution report warned NASA officials that such a discovery of an ET presence would result in nothing short of the disintegration of society as we know it. There definitely appears to be, between all the different things that I've looked at, there definitely appears to be an agenda to keep hidden from the general public what's actually on the moon. There's no question that there's artificial structures and bases there, and that's just something that NASA does not want people to realize. The governmental belief is that if enough people actually came to the conclusion that there was some sort of forward base, an advanced base on the moon, that we would go crazy, we would stop going to work, we would stop being productive, our society would stop moving forward, everything would grind to a halt and we'd be thrown back into the Stone Age. Maybe that's one reason why Buzz Aldrin, when asked to view photos containing potential alien structures, refused to do so, suggesting that others at NASA had that responsibility. Now, wait a minute. Don't you think the people who designed the camera sent it out as an experiment when the pictures came back? They looked at them to see if there was anything unusual, and they didn't find anything. If they had, either we got some people who were scared to talk about it or they're withholding evidence, uh, and, and that's not what science is about. Science is about un informing people what evidence has been found. And those are experts. But how can any expert explain away this startling photo shot by the Apollo 11 astronauts, showing what appears to be a gigantic flying saucer parked on the lunar surface? It looks distinctly artificial, with some sort of machined ridges or indentions running all the way around the top that are almost decorative in appearance. Overall, it resembles a classic alien ship. Yet Aldrin still would not look at the baffling picture, despite the fact he was likely involved in shooting it. I don't want to even get involved in it. Is Aldrin hiding something about this saucer that was caught in official NASA photography sitting on the surface of the moon? To confirm the saucer photo isn't doctored, we decided to take it to a top imaging analyst. Coming up later, his exclusive investigation and astonishing conclusions. But up next, what are the aliens building? It had a pipe and it had a very unusual extension. What is this two mile high array? It's an amazing structure, there's no way to explain it. Later, did an ET ship crash land on the lunar surface? Some people see a space capsule or some alien structure. When aliens on the moon, the truth exposed returns. Though Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin would not comment on official NASA photos containing possible evidence of aliens on the moon, one astonishing picture taken during his historic mission shows what looks like a huge saucer or intricately designed building. We see the clear angles which seem to suggest intelligent construction. The big question is who by? Is it some sort of secret space program? Is it aliens? We just don't know, but I think the onus is on us to try and find out further. Look at this perplexing NASA photo of the moon's Kepler crater. Taken by the Lunar Orbiter 3 in 1967, it is causing heated debate on the internet and within the UFO research community. The entire crater looks like a strip mine part of the top rim has been completely sheared off, and a large piece of the wall that was somehow cut away lies beneath inside. There's a massive pile of rubble, or possibly destroyed buildings, in the center. 
perhaps a mile and a half down. And an enormous white rectangular slab could be hiding something very large where the left side of the crater rim had been. The area in front suggests some form of a concrete piping tree is sticking out. And the oval openings of these pipes or tubes embedded there could be designed to vent some gas or vapor. Not surprisingly, a suspicious sign NASA might be concerned about this photo, showing potential alien activity on the moon, can be found in this picture NASA released several years later of the same crater. It looks completely different, almost pristine. The crater rim is now completely intact, the wall appearing untouched by excavation. Maybe it's not the crater that has changed, but rather the photographic details. And a former NASA employee says, doctoring a photo like this is all part of the job. Donna Hare remembers the first time she witnessed a NASA colleague altering a similarly provocative image, one showing a hovering flying saucer. I looked at him and I said, is it a UFO? And he's smiling at me and he crosses his arms and he says, I can't tell you that. And I said, what are you gonna do with this piece of information? He says, we have to airbrush these out. After I realized that, I started asking different people that worked out there. And what I found was some people knew about it and other people didn't. But the people that told me that there was a cover up would tell me off site. They wouldn't talk about it. They'd tell me, don't ever say I said it or I'll say I didn't. Hare reveals that retouching out possible evidence of aliens in our skies and on the lunar surface is par for the course. And NASA has strict guidelines for deciding what images to alter. What was censored in the photographs was technology that's not related to us, really, that is really high tech. Uh, the craft that I saw being taken out was right over the trees. I don't know of anything that can hover like that. One time I went into the slide lab where they airbrush and the woman that was airbrushing out negatives, she was trying to cover up something on the moon. But this eye-opening footage shot by Apollo 8 as the astronauts circled the moon has never been suppressed, nor explained for that matter. Is it evidence of possible industrial-like technology existing there? In 1968, as Apollo 8 flew over the lunar surface, one of their cameras captured an anomaly. It looks similar to a smokestack jutting from the surface of the moon. And just as the camera passes by, it appears to release some kind of a jet, like a little cloud that drifts to the right. According to researchers, what makes the film sequence so extraordinary is how it's shot. One thing that makes this footage special is that you can see motion within the span of stills. I mean, as the camera is moving over the lunar surface, you actually see this smokestack-like anomaly change perspective as it gets closer and closer to the camera. Russian say they saw smoke rising from Kepler, but in the medium, there's no smoke evidence. Apollo 8 was flying 70 miles above the lunar surface when it shot this footage, viewable in both black and white and color. The smokestack has been estimated to be more than a thousand feet tall. Is this gigantic structure somehow connected to the same vast mining operation seemingly documented in NASA's Lunar Orbiter 3-162 photo of Kepler Crater. Also, what exactly is being mined here and throughout the moon? Scientists have discovered the moon's surface is rich with helium-3, a fuel that can, in theory, run highly efficient nuclear fusion reactors. Helium-3 could well be the solution to the world's growing energy needs. Its existence on the moon was confirmed during the Apollo 17 mission. There are altogether 
15 tons of helium-3 on Earth, while the Moon holds more than 5 million tons trapped in the surface material called regolith. This helium-3 on the Moon could be used not only by us, but by aliens. And then what we are seeing is part of the mining operation. Could this also explain the apparent equipment carving deep tracks in the lunar surface, like a circular saw? Or pipelines crossing over the lunar terrain? Spigots and valves? And huge pipes crossing over entire craters? Such as what this extraordinary photo researchers discovered at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory a few years ago seems to show. So the photograph was so incredible. It had a pipe running through a crater going from one wall to the other wall, proceeding underground where you could follow it on top, the surface, to what appeared to be a cliff and this pipe extended right through the cliff out into the open and it had a very unusual what appeared to be extension on the end of the pipe it can only be artificial the extension looks remarkably like a funnel shaped pipe fitting positioned on top of a vertical pole pointing up into space perhaps the funnel regulates the venting of vapor like what's seen in the Apollo 8 smokestack footage. Whether we are seeing the mining for nuclear fusion materials or some sort of thermal venting on the moon, most experts say one thing is clear. The photo evidence is authentic and the puzzling lunar structures must have some connection to each other. Take for example this inexplicable structure that plainly should not exist on the moon in a location NASA had scrutinized heavily prior to putting men on the surface. There's an area on the moon called Sinus Medii, which basically means the sea in the middle, and it's one of the areas that's been the most photographed because initially it was thought it might be a good landing site for the first Apollo lunar landing. Now, there is one particular photograph of this area, and in one of the frames, you see this thing, this tower sticking up out of the ground, which has this wire assembly at the very top of it, which looks like two ends of a paper clip wrapped around a pencil or a post or something like that, sticking a mile or two miles out of the lunar surface. While the base of the structure is partly in shadow, the metallic top is quite unique, not only because of its unusual shape, but because of how it reflects the light in two directions. It's an amazing structure. There's no way to explain it, and it's unquestionably authentic because it came off of images, data, negatives that we got right out of NASA's own archives. Could this bizarre array be a beacon of some sort, more sensitive than anything we have on Earth? Or a warning device designed to alert the inhabitants of unwelcomed visitors? NASA might be asking the very same questions, considering how many of Earth's space probes have mysteriously vanished around nearby planets and most notably, Mars. Up next, is this an alien monolith? An extremely credible professor says it is not a natural formation. And experts weigh in on this. Could it really be a bridge? Sure, maybe. And later. This is meant to be the alien that they recovered from the ship. When Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed continues. An extraordinary photo snapped by Apollo 11 seems to document a mysterious saucer was parked on the moon as Buzz Aldrin and Flight Commander Neil Armstrong made their way down to their meeting with destiny. Aldrin won't discuss the shocking saucer image or other NASA photos researchers have uncovered showing potential alien artifacts. But we've asked a top imaging expert his opinion about the picture. And tonight, he'll reveal whether or not this is hard proof Apollo 11 was not alone that historic day 45 years ago. Yet Aldrin is encouraging the world and our space program to focus on another moon that might have an alien artifact on it. 
Though he isn't sure if this rectangular object embedded in the Martian moon Phobos is of intelligent origin or not, Aldrin considers Phobos an ideal launching point for a mission to the Red Planet, no matter what the structure is. I can't conceive of it being other than a naturally formed uh, rock formation. How? I don't know. That's not my business. I'm, I, I look to other people who uh, are into the mechanics of what would form a moon like that. Is it an asteroid? Is it the sum of things that came together? Uh, like the asteroid belt, did it get chipped off somewhere? I have no idea. It was while researching landing sites on Phobos that Aldrin learned of the monolith, a huge stone slab almost 300 feet across that is similar to the alien structure in the classic sci-fi film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Aldrin finds it interesting that a scientist has come forward supporting the notion this could be artificial. It surprised me that uh, an extremely credible person, a professor, who is uh, part of uh, professional societies in the subject of uh, settlements and colonization, he's aware of this and, and he says, absolutely, without a doubt, it is not a natural formation. He didn't know anything other than that, but he just says, it, it's just not. And Aldrin recognizes that such academic support in the alien origin hypothesis for the Phobos monolith could help get people excited about exploring Mars and its moons. I am interested in the public supporting what we're doing for varieties of reasons. And if some kooky part of the public over here thinks that, that this monolith has been put there by aliens, fine, they're gonna create a lot of enthusiasm and it's gonna get people wondering and they're not gonna be satisfied until it's proven one way or the other and even then. Phobos has always been a source of controversy. In the early 1960s, several prominent physicists claimed that the moon was actually an artificial satellite pulled into Martian orbit by aliens. The theory has its supporters even today, but there's a bigger mystery about Phobos, unsolved for almost 30 years, one which investigators are still trying to explain. The Soviet Union in July of 1988 launched two probes to Mars. Phobos 1 and Phobos 2. Now, approximately a month or so after launch, Phobos 1 disappeared. The Russians lost it. Now, they attributed this loss to a combination of computer and human error. But the story that subsequently emerged is far more chilling. Russian researchers went public, claiming a shadowy, unidentified craft may have destroyed Phobos 1 before going on to eliminate Phobos 2 in a startling sequence of events captured on film. Just before vanishing forever, Phobos 2 photographed what might be a gigantic alien spaceship with bad intentions. Broadcast on Russian television and described as a thin ellipse, the image resembles a needle or a dagger aimed at the Martian moon. Whatever its true shape, it is estimated to be larger than any craft mankind has conceived of. I'm talking about 25 kilometers in length and a kilometer and a half in diameter. Now, according to Glav Cosmos, the Russian agency at that time, this object or something turned toward their spacecraft and rammed it, knocked it out of orbit. The American defense establishment curiously remained silent about the incident, perhaps because American probes have reportedly been destroyed near Mars as well. But we do know for certain that several unmanned missions, spacecraft missions to Mars that had been launched by NASA uh, that we lost several 
Uh, and these were expensive missions that as they got closer to Mars, suddenly they just stopped operating. It didn't happen just once, it happened at least two times where we lost billion dollar spacecraft for unknown reasons. And NASA still has never come forward with what they know really happened. Is NASA withholding information about a dangerous alien presence operating around Mars? Recent photographs taken by the Mars Curiosity rover suggest a UFO similar to what seemingly destroyed Russian and perhaps US space probes might still be patrolling the Martian skies. Earlier this year, the rover's cameras captured an almost identical cylindrical shaped UFO as the one Phobos 2 photographed back in 1989, right before it was obliterated. This time, the cylinder appears to be rocketing over the planet, remaining in view for roughly 10 minutes before disappearing. Researchers first believed the moving image resulted from the camera shutter staying open, producing a time-lapse effect. But upon examination, the shutter speed was normal. Alarmingly, some military insiders say the U.S. government is keenly aware there's a real ET threat facing us. We were aware there was a possibility of an unknown presence, possibly alien, extraterrestrial, near the Earth. John Brandenburg is the former deputy manager of the Clementine mission, a classified operation designed to map and investigate all corners of the moon. It was a photo reconnaissance mission basically to check out if someone was building bases on the moon that we didn't know about. Were they expanding them? Brandenburg says Clementine's lunar photos were analyzed by an elite Defense Department team with the highest security clearance. They basically kept to themselves and just did their work. And we were told not to interfere with them unless we had a special reason. So only the higher ups from the Naval Research Lab went up there. But Brandenburg recalls a previous screening he did have with top military brass who were studying riveting footage showing UFOs navigating away from a laser-like weapon being fired upon them. There I am sitting in this room full of retired Army and Air Force generals and a few admirals, and we're watching what looks like a firefight in space. The most senior general there, an Army general, turned to me and said, where do you think they're from? And I said, I don't know, sir. I, I've heard they're from 40 light years from here. And his comment was, long supply lines. When an Army general says long supply lines, he's already thinking, of, how do I deal with these people from far away? How do I make them go back to where they came from? The reaction of numerous space defense officials who I watched these movies with was a fear and astonishment. It's NASA footage like this, showing UFOs flying so close to our planet, and the veil of secrecy he witnessed during Clementine's mapping of the lunar surface that prompted Brandenburg to begin searching for proof positive photos of aliens on the moon. Once he saw the main structure depicted on the cover of ULOs, Unidentified Lunar Objects Revealed in NASA Photography, he knew he had hit pay dirt. Of all the pictures I've seen from the moon that show possible structures, the most impressive is a picture of a miles wide rectilinear structure. Um, this look un unmistakably artificial and it shouldn't be there. Uh, as somebody in the defense, space defense community, I look on any such structure on the moon with great concern because it isn't ours. There's no way we could have built such a thing. It means someone else is up there. In this striking photo taken by Apollo 15, you can clearly see the structure from orbit, looking like a sprawling complex or prison, as some have described it, stretching out across the lunar terrain. What could it possibly represent? Here in this digital simulation of what it might be like to fly in from space and circle the structure, we can see what it might look like up close, either today or in the moon's distant past. 
Finding this Apollo 15 image was just the beginning of Brandenburg's discovery process. Photo after photo presented in the book and also available in NASA's official archive added to his conviction that the U.S. government knows of an alien presence on the moon. And he embarked on a mission to help bring the best images into the public spotlight and alert our citizens of the considerable stakes involved. Next is an alien energy source operating on the moon. To me, it looks like the power generators for the uh, Rebel base on one of the Star Wars movies. And is this image proof the Apollo 11 astronauts encountered aliens before the first moonwalk? And it has these intervals of evenly spaced compartments. When aliens on the moon, the truth exposed continues. U.S. Defense Department concerns about apparent alien activity in space and on the moon have been confirmed by a top military expert. And the photographic evidence in NASA's own archives suggesting there might actually be ET lunar bases with potential nuclear capability is frightening. Especially when compared to one of the most dangerous confrontations in history, which could have ended human civilization. Having seen the pictures that triggered the Cuban Missile Crisis, I look on these images as even more provocative, even more suggestive that somebody is building structures where they shouldn't be, on our moon. Now, if we kind of draw a parallel with what's going on on the moon, maybe we're actually seeing some sort of staging post that in the same way Cuba was a threat to the United States in 62, the moon is subtly and slowly being turned into a threat to the people of Earth. What worries researchers, and presumably military brass, are what the aliens might be planning. If hostile extraterrestrials are on the surface of the moon and are planning some sort of assault on the Earth, then I would hope and think that government and military agencies are preparing something as a, as a counterforce. Now, whether they would actually have the ability to, that's the big question. If we're dealing with creatures, with entities that are far in advance of us, I often wonder, would we even stand a chance or would it be game over before it even barely began? With such potentially dire stakes for mankind involved, Mark D'Antonio, a photo and video analyst with more than 30 years of experience, is attempting to determine if the most compelling photographic evidence proves an alien threat is real. So far, his investigation has determined we have real reasons for concern. Well, there is a lot of very compelling video and photo evidence that indicates that something is happening out there. There are some structures I have seen in images that I've received uh, of the moon that I have not been able to explain. Images like this one that mystify both D'Antonio and Defense Department expert Brandenburg. There's an interesting structure on the moon that uh, I've seen that looks like several wagon wheels in a row, uh, either embedded into the lunar surface or just sitting there kind of on, their, on an angle. It seems to show a large a flat structure and then below it, uh, some either wheel or dome-like structures. And this is clearly provocative. This does not look like a natural geologic feature. Could these massive wheels, half buried beneath the lunar surface, be designed for mining, excavation, or possibly traversing the rocky lunar landscape? in a vehicle otherworldly in scale. Anyone who analyzes this knows it's of enormous size. These things are miles across. If someone built this, they're very busy, very vigorous. These things are taller than the Sears Tower. Some researchers are convinced these are energy-creating machines supporting an alien complex right out of an epic sci-fi movie. 
to me, it looks like it looks like the power generators for for like the the uh, rebel base on on one of the Star Wars movies. It's they're these incredible half buried round sort of um, tur look like turbine generators, and they're all sort of lined up and packed together around this other block as if they were the power generators for some sort of factory or something that was operating there on the lunar surface. It's absolutely an incredible image. Another huge structure that has analysts stumped is the massive sized bridge and puzzling pipe seen sitting high above nearby. I am familiar with the bridge and the worm-like object on the moon, the worm-like pipe from the Apollo 8 uh, film reels, yes. My reaction to the bridge is that the lunar surface is undulating. Now, I, now could it really be a bridge? Sure, maybe. Imaging expert D'Antonio sees much more that he feels should not be standing on the moon. Well, it's interesting that one of the photos actually shows what looks like a tower sticking up. Uh, in fact, it looks like not just one, but there's two little ones next to it. And I have to say that that one I found uh, to be perplexing because I couldn't figure out what it was. Many experts feel the same way about this baffling Apollo 17 image of what looks like an interplanetary vehicle sitting out in the open on the moon. Viewable from orbit, the ornate structure seems to have an artificially crafted pointy top and row of evenly spaced portholes or windows encircling it. Roughly a half mile in diameter, the window in front may actually be a portal for another craft. I know some people have looked at these features and they see a space capsule or some other alien structure. But in reality, it could be something completely different. When I looked at the capsule image, it, it, it is rather intriguing because it looks like a 3D object sticking up off the moon, at least at first glance. Now, there's a rectangular looking window in the front that some people might have called hangar, where ships can go in and out if that's what this is, uh, a large vessel of some kind. It's hard to tell. In this NASA-like virtual fly-in from space, it's easy to appreciate why even the most skeptical experts marvel at this image. The capsule-looking structure appears to be completely foreign to the surrounding terrain, and its position suggests it might have even crashed there or was marooned, unable to take off from where it was perched. But the one NASA picture that stands out even more to imaging analyst D'Antonio as a potential alien spaceship on the moon might change the way we look at our place in the universe. The historic Apollo 11 mission and the second astronaut who landed there. Well, this interesting picture turned up where you actually see what looks like a giant saucer sitting on the moon. And if that's what it is, it's massive, it's huge, it's a mothership, and it's sitting on the lunar surface, and even has a, looks like it has a sloped top and a little thing on top. At once you look at that and you're startled and say, wow, that's very interesting. While D'Antonio is quite curious why Buzz Aldrin disavows any knowledge of this saucer, he is intrigued by how intricately constructed it appears to be. And it has these intervals of evenly spaced compartments, if you will, moving around the outside. I find that compelling because those don't look like naturally occurring objects to me. The veteran photo analyst believes this official Apollo 11 picture is not the result of a trick of lighting or any other optical illusion. He contends it is real and his findings could lead many researchers to deem it the smoking gun that UFO and alien believers have longed for, despite Aldrin's refusal to address it. Whether this was actually the famous Apollo 11 UFO seen during transit to the moon by the Apollo 11 crew, that remains to be discovered somewhere else down the line. If Aldrin and NASA are hiding knowledge of this gigantic saucer on the moon, they could be following a script laid down many years ago by the U.S. government when contact with aliens was considered a major concern to be carefully guarded and not officially revealed 
due to mass panic that might ensue. Before NASA went to the moon in the early 1960s, and among the findings, there was sort of this idea that if, if we were to find any alien structures or have any kind of interaction with alien life form or intelligence, that maybe we shouldn't tell the public because the public might not be able to handle it. A structure on the moon created by another entity other than anyone on the planet Earth implies that somebody else is here <laughs> or was here. And we want to obviously protect ourselves. We want to make sure that we know who they are and what they're doing there. How will the world react to this potentially earth-shattering news that a leading photographic authority has confirmed we might now have the ultimate proof that Apollo 11 encountered a mysterious alien race on the moon that our astronauts and the U.S. government are still covering up. What is truly at stake here? Uh, well, the concern is someone has built a base, apparently, on the moon. It's not us. What are they doing there? What are their intentions? Uh, is this space occupied? Is it being expanded? Has it been expanded since Apollo days? Is somebody doing their job down at the Pentagon and watching this base continually? The moon is strategic. In the space defense community, everyone understands whoever owns the moon will own the Earth eventually. It's either going to be the human race or somebody else. Next, did a secret mission to the moon find alien life? This is meant to be the alien that they recovered from the ship. And did this alien race have contact with humanity? This is a sign that there may be some influence on some of the cultures that actually believe higher beings literally have a third eye. When aliens on the moon, the truth exposed continues. According to the official record, NASA exploration of the moon by sending astronauts there ended with Apollo 17. But this long accepted notion has come into question the last few years, primarily due to shocking allegations and never before seen videos that could change the way we view ourselves, the space program and alien life forever. Well, officially, the last Apollo mission was Apollo 17 in 1972. They had planned to do Apollo 18, 19, and 20, but those were supposedly canceled due to some problems with technical and financing issues. However, around 2007, a man um, surfaced on the internet calling himself William Rutledge saying that there was, in fact, an Apollo 20 in 1976, and that he was one of the astronauts, and that they actually traveled to the far side of the moon, landed, and explored an alien face. And footage from this excursion began to slowly leak out onto the internet, showing not only these exotic structures, but most shockingly, a body that appears to be a mummified alien woman, maybe even a hibernating female woman. As seemingly documented in these video clips Rutledge released from an undisclosed location, the former civilian test pilot and his fellow crew members, pilot Leona Snyder and a Russian cosmonaut named Alexei Leonov, trained in private before secretly launching into space from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Rutledge claimed the mission's origins stemmed from an extraordinary NASA photo, one which had previously convinced many researchers for years that evidence of aliens had been found on the lunar surface. Another one of my favorite moonshots, as it were, uh, was uh, taken by Apollo 15 astronauts uh, showing uh, lying on the surface of the moon what appears to be, uh, and they could measure it, a miles-long fuselage or spaceship. It's, it's as if you would take like a, um, just a regular jet airliner and, and don't give it any wings uh, or a tail section. 
just like, like a cigar shape. It's just a huge thing sitting there, and it looks totally artificial. Another video sequence Rutledge released shows what appears to be the Apollo 20 spacecraft in flight on the way to the moon, with another craft either following it or trying to rendezvous. It's unclear what precisely is going on, and Rutledge has not clarified these peculiarly shot images. But researchers say footage recorded later in the mission looks very authentic. So there's another scene inside the lunar module, and it looks like the inside of a lunar module. There's a mission patch up on the wall, so it looks like a you know, legitimate NASA mission. All the things that you'd expect to see are there. An emblem of the Russian and American flag apparently commemorates the purported joint US-USSR mission, which Rutledge claimed it was. When the sequence documenting the trip down to the lunar surface begins, the focus of the mission soon comes clearly into view. William Rutledge's Apollo 20 footage looks like any other Apollo mission landing, a lunar module descending to the surface. And we also see this structure on the moon that looks a little bit like what we saw in that picture from Apollo 15. Take a look at how the fuselage-shaped structure captured in the official NASA photo compares with the alien-looking spaceship the Apollo 20 astronauts appear to be hovering over before coming to a rest on the surface. The similarities and the overall connections Rutledge makes between the two make the case more convincing, according to researchers. Uh, the idea that this Apollo 20 mission was going to recover something that had been seen in another NASA image from Apollo 15, I think gives the idea credibility and sort of gives it that morsel of truth that you really want to latch onto and make it something that you can really believe in. But can we believe in the incredible and sometimes disturbing video sequences that come next, which over 75 million web viewers have been poring over the past few years? After the lunar module seemingly has touched down, revealing footage shows the lunar terrain outside the vehicle where another lander, perhaps a Russian one, stands tall. Then the cameraman, perhaps Rutledge himself, hands the camera around the craft and catches something unexpected. The other thing that is inside this lunar module looks like a woman. Um, there's a, a shot of a woman's face and then there's sort of wax over her features. And this is meant to be, I believe, the alien that they recovered from the ship that was seen in the Apollo 15 imagery. Close-ups of the alien woman suggest her skin is either mummified in some way or covered with a strange glaze. Her expression seemed sublime, and she was affectionately named Mona Lisa by the purported Apollo 20 crew. She is not wearing any clothing, and her exposed breasts look strikingly human. There has been much debate around the world whether a very different sequence shows the same alien or a second one entirely. There do seem to be enough physical differences to suggest two separate beings were discovered on the moon. What does the medical-looking procedure represent? Did the tubing and other implements keep this creature alive? Eerily, some information Rutledge released suggests this alien was not found intact. Rather, just part of her body severed from the rest. Well, there, there's, there's a video that shows uh, purportedly the head of this woman with her eyes being propped open by some kind of wires. Whether it shows a whole being or not, this footage, including the strange writing depicted, has sparked much speculation about the condition she was found in and her possible ties to Earth culture mythology. The female alien seemed to have some apparatus on uh, her face, connecting her mouth to her eyes, to a point on her forehead where the uh, third eye might be located. Now, I must tell you, it's interesting 
that this alien has a third eye because obviously this is a sign that there may be some influence on some of the cultures, for example, the Hindus, that actually believe higher beings, more enlightened beings, literally have a third eye. While the possibility that this alleged alien race had contact with humanity intrigues researchers, the case is considered suspicious for its unproven provenance and a variety of other reasons. Most see its authenticity basically as a black and white issue. But either way, its existence seems significant to investigators. It just seems almost impossible that footage this sensational could leak out this way. But if it is fake, it's possible it could be part of a misinformation campaign released by NASA or other government agencies in order to further confuse the true footage, the authentic footage out there showing these bases and structures on the moon, they want to remain secret. Next is a pyramid on the moon proof aliens met with ancient man. Looks like an ancient Mesopotamian pyramid. And did Apollo 17 find a crash debris field? As you closely examine them, they look more like mechanical devices. Stay tuned when Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed, continues. Tonight, we've seen this huge saucer that Apollo 11 captured on film, as well as three other potential craft, and an extraordinary ornate looking capsule that was possibly abandoned by aliens after crash landing. Some researchers suggest ETs occupying the moon could have interacted with ancient human cultures, moving back and forth, leaving telltale signs of their influence on mankind. When we're looking for clues to the nature of the UFO phenomenon, it's always intriguing when we find similarities in totally different places. For example, on the surface of the moon, on Mars, and in Egypt, in, on the Earth, we find pyramid-type structures. Amazingly, the recent discovery of what appears to be an enormous artificial pyramid on the lunar surface by author Mike Barra indicates such exquisite designs on Earth could have an alien starting point. There is on the backside of the moon near a crater called Daedalus, a structure that I call the Daedalus ziggurat. It looks like an ancient Mesopotamian pyramid between this object, this sort of wedge-shaped front to it, a square interior, a, a square central temple structure with a dome on top of it, an entrance. It had all these features that typical Mesopotamian ziggurats actually have. When Barrow publicized its similarity to pyramids on Earth, he was rebuffed by the scientific community. I was roundly attacked by different NASA-backed scientists about it. They claim that I fabricated the image. Barra contends NASA even altered the details of the structure in the official lunar photo archive. Take a look at the pyramid Barra discovered. Now, look closely at how NASA or US government photo technicians may have altered it. And it's completely whitewashed. It doesn't look like anything except this series of craters. But such an attempt to censor this lunar pyramid does not daunt informed researchers. The fascinating thing is that if you ignore the ziggurat, even if you say it's not there, which it is, you look around and there's all kinds of incredible stuff that's clearly artificial. Many experts believe the ziggurat supports the popular ancient astronaut theory that humans and aliens met in Earth's past. And this association might have included aliens helping the human race survive. The idea that aliens have come to Earth and interacted with ancient man and helped us build the pyramids, gave us technology that got us off the Earth to avoid some catastrophes. It sounds like there's enough sort of roots of science to make it believable, maybe, because we do have this technology, we do have pyramids. Though no human ever entered the Ziggurat Pyramid on the moon, Mike Barra believes Apollo 17 astronauts may have entered a structure containing alien artifacts. 
There was a hexagonal mountain um, that they drove right up to on the second day. Spent a bunch of time looking in a V-shaped depression, which is called Nansen. And there are many pictures from Apollo 17 itself on the lunar surface where you can see objects that at first might look like rocks, but as you closely examine them, they look more like mechanical devices. Precisely what the Apollo 17 astronauts found lying out on the lunar surface remains a mystery. But among the machine-like objects, which some researchers contend actually are part of a crash debris field, sits an eerie human-like skull. Do these shocking photos prove NASA knew Apollo 17 would find proof positive evidence of alien beings? Perhaps humanoid ETs tied to ancient Earth history? Until mankind returns to the lunar surface and goes to all the specific locations where evidence of aliens on the moon exists, you'll have to decide for yourself.